Hey folks, Krusty Old Brain here. I thought I'd share with you some of the things I've been up to the last few weeks. Uh, if you're not in the know, the last few weeks, uh, latter part of July and early August, you know, the NRA Nationals and uh, Camp Atterbury and the CMP Nationals at Camp Perry. And I didn't shoot neither one of them. I uh, really didn't have the time off scheduled for that. And since I just got into those shooting really in the last year, I wasn't all that ready for them. I'm shooting solid uh, expert, uh, low master scores, and I really would not have been competitive. And other than the experience, you know, that would have been really nice. Other than that, it probably would have been a bit of a waste of my time. Um, so instead, I decided to work on a reloading area. I got into reloading last year, and uh, when we decided to do it, my son and I, I decided I didn't have enough room to put a reloading area at my house. I really did have enough room, but I was too lazy to dejunk the bonus room, and he had a big unused area in his garage, so we thought, well, we'll put it down there. And the agreement was that I was going to pay for all, I was going to buy all the equipment, and uh, he was going to do all the reloading. He had reloading experience. I had very little, and uh, I've since gotten a lot more. And uh, But anyway, you know, he was going to do the reloading, including my stuff. And it's funny how time works out, you know? You don't ever have as much time as you think you will, and everything takes a lot longer than you think it's going to. So he wasn't getting much of my reloading done, and I started going down there and doing reloading. And I discovered that I really love the process. I like reloading. Problem is, <clears throat> he lives 30 minutes away, and it's really inconvenient. You know, I have to drive half an hour down there, half an hour back, and when I get there, it takes 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes just to get set up, because he's got projects going on too, and I don't want to mess up his stuff. So, um, yeah, I decided I need my own. Um, I need to be able to develop uh, loads, do load testing, small batch stuff, and that's really inconvenient when you're wasting an hour and a half of time just to do a small batch of, say, five or 10, 15 rounds. And, uh, so with my own reloading area, I could do that a lot better. You know, he and I are a very similar mindset and personality, but we have different needs. He's a professional guide, so most of his reloading stuff is geared toward hunting. And while I do hunt, uh, most of my shooting is geared toward, you know, precision rifle stuff, uh, high power competition, long range rifle. So uh, re yeah, really different needs. And I found that, you know, having two people share the same reloading setup, it, it's just not a good thing. It's not efficient. So, uh, yeah, about uh, three or four weeks ago, I decided to do my own. But, like I said, I had to declutter the bonus room. Uh, it's been needing that for a long time. But, you know, I was able to sell a few items. Uh, took a few items to Goodwill, a few to the dump, and... I have a few more I need to get rid of, but, uh, you know, I've got enough room and mainly what I need to get rid of now is the RC airplane collection. Well, we're not into that anymore, so I've got that up for sale. Anybody that wants to buy an RC airplane collection with about, I don't know, seven or eight airplanes and all kinds of parts, holler at me because I'm going to let it go cheap. Anyway, I started with this bench. Let's take a look at it for a minute. So, yeah. This bench is 8 feet long, 32 inches deep, and it's probably a little overkill, but man, it is really sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Um, I'm not done with it yet. I'm going to put T-tracks on the top of it and 5 8 inch plywood, a little nicer finish than this LVL beam, but that was a really good deal on that LVL beam because I got all of that for free. And it's really thick. It's an inch and three quarter thick, heavy, uh, very sturdy, but you know, you can't argue with free. And unlike the bench we built down at my son's house, I decided to bolt this together because instead of putting screws in it, because it will not fit through the door of the bonus room. I had to sort of build it in place. And if I ever want to take it out of here, everything's marked. I can just take the bolts out take it apart, take it out, and easily line it back up and put it back together with bolts. Now this piece right over here is a little Black & Decker uh, 
I guess just like a tool bench. It's not super expensive, but you know, it's decent. We had it with uh, RC stuff, so I just kind of repurposed it for reloading tools and makes a really good storage area. And this piece over here, we had in my daughter's uh, dorm room. Um, it was built kind of specific for a space that she had. The, this area was open so that she could have a small dorm fridge in here. And, you know, she's graduated now. We weren't, she wasn't using it, but she didn't want to get rid of it, you know, because it's something her daddy built for. And I figured I could really use that in here, uh, although it needed a couple of shelves in it. So I added these shelves, and I just put them in a place where they look symmetrical to the eye and, you know, where they were easy to install. And totally by accident, it worked out perfect that I could store uh, one pound powder jugs up here. So I can go eight deep on these and five across. So I can put 40 pounds of powder right there and it's nice and organized. I got these two lights at Lowe's. Uh, I think they were like $35 each. They're LED and they put out, I don't know, something crazy like 7,000 lumens. They are really bright, which is great because the lighting in here is not good. There's three overhead lights and two windows. But these right here, they put a lot of light on the workbench area. And uh, yeah, it's a great investment on that. Uh, got the Gadsden Don't Tread On Me flag. And it's not here yet, but I've got a Marine Corps flag coming to put right there. Decorated up a little bit. So. so anyway, I got all that done. And then reality strikes. You know, I have to go back to work. And I went to work for... Uh, about two and a half weeks. I worked some overtime because I needed some money to pay for all this stuff that I'm putting in up here. And, you know, the colonel, that's what I call my wife sometimes, the colonel, she decided that, uh, well, since you're spending so much money on gun stuff, then I needed a remodel redo of the kitchen and the living room and the dining room. Uh, so, need some money for that. Honestly, it's uh, it's long overdue. Uh, she's been real patient with it. Uh, it's not just something for her. It's something for the house. I built this house 25 years ago. So, you know, a couple things in it are dated. And uh, she cooks a lot. And she's a really good cook. And I want her to have a nice kitchen. So, went and worked some overtime for that. But while I was out working overtime, I ordered a lot of the stuff that I don't have. I took some of the redundant things from my son's place, but uh, I needed a lot, you know, like a press. I wanted to get a uh, a uh, wet tumbler and just all sorts of things. I have another space over there that I need a uh, storage rack for. And uh, so, yeah, when I come home, it's kind of like Christmas or, as I like to say, FedExmas. I'm not going to say UPSmas because UPS now to me is a vile word and a vile organization. I don't know if you all were aware of, you know, what they pulled on July the 2nd where they sent out a letter to Brownells, Ghost Guns, and a bunch of other uh, uh, gun retailers, legal dealers now, that, uh, you know, they weren't gonna take their shipments anymore and any shipments in transit, they may confiscate and destroy. Hmm, that's fascism at its finest, eh? But you know, they got an inundation of nasty letters for that policy. And they reversed that about a week later with another letter. It's not totally reversed. They're still kind of out on the limb uh, with that kind of crap. But uh, that did it for me. I will never do business with UPS again if I'm given a choice. You know, even if I have to pay more, I'll ship it FedEx or USPS. Uh, if they're going to act fascist like that, it's uh, I'm done with them. And I think it's largely stemming from their leftist woke CEO Carol Tomey. She, uh, she's the first CEO, out, first outsider CEO ever of uh, UPS. They've all been internally prior to that, but uh, somehow she got in there and uh, she's kind of on the leftist woke side, gave into the uh, senator's letters there and probably stems a lot from their owners too. Um, BlackRock and Vanguard together, which you say together or separate, it's really the same entity. They both own a big share of each other. It's, it's a shell game with corporations. But, uh, you know, they're a big leader in the World Economic Forum. And those two companies alone 
own over 16% of UPS. Over, what was it, over 119 million shares of UPS stock. So uh, if you can avoid doing business with them, I would advise it, but it's going to be really difficult because they're like, they're like a parasite. They're like a, I don't know, a virus or a worm. They're, they are so embedded into every aspect of, uh, you know, our financial society. It's, uh, it's incredible. And being part of the World Economic Forum, well, they're part of that woke bullshit too. But anyway, uh, yeah, Carol, tell me, she's the one that issued the letter, she's the, or, or the order. So if you feel like writing her, I'm sure her email address is out there somewhere. And she's on LinkedIn, so give her a shout. Anyway, <clears throat> I have FedExmas here, so we're going to open up some of this stuff and uh, see what uh, Santa Fred brought me. So, what all did Fred Claus bring me? i got to be honest, I've already opened a little bit of this stuff. But I know what it is. I decided, eh, you know, it would be good to make a video on it. Uh, this is four pieces of 5 8 inch T-Track from uh, Peachtree Woodworks. I got this idea from uh, Gavin over at Ultimate Reloader. I'm going to take these rails, mount them on the top here, fill them with plywood, Another rail back here, eight inches on center, and that way I'll be able to take my uh, press, uh, powder hopper, uh, a vise that I'm going to put up here, anything like that. I can mount them up here and move them around and keep the table clean. You know, if I want to do some work on rifles, whatever, I won't have a bunch of stuff permanently attached to the table. So we got those four. Uh, let's see what else we got. This bag. I have no idea. No, honestly, I ordered some of this stuff almost three weeks ago, so uh, I forgot everything that I ordered. That's why it's sort of like Christmas. Oh, okay. So that's the Hornady OAL gauge. I can uh, check the overall length of you know what my rifle will take. Uh, I'm going to do it both on my uh, 6.5 Creedmoor that I shoot for a uh, long range F class open. And I'm going to do it on my service rifle too because on the uh, slow fire stuff we hand load it so I can uh, I can load longer longer rounds if I need to, want to, if the accuracy nodes work out there uh, for the 200 yard slow fire and the 600 yard slow fire. So we got that. Let's see what we got here. Uh, that's from Mr. J Tools. Hmm. Don't remember. That is. Oh, it's a it's a hand chamfer and deburr tool. So uh, I've got I ordered a. Uh, RCBS case prep station because we put one down at my son's. I like that really well. But uh, I've got I've got this little hand one too. Ordered that one off Amazon actually. But uh, yeah, it'll work out fine. Let's see what the next package has got. Ah, that's a reloading book. I can tell. Uh, I didn't want to steal all the ones from my son's house. I kept the Lyman long range. Uh, Lyman Long Range and the Lyman AR Reloading Book. That's the Lyman 50th Edition Reloading Handbook. We'll set that right over there. I'm going to do a, book, a little bookcase kind of thing here somewhere. Want to get all this done. And what do we got here? I bet that is a die. I'm set up primarily, or I'm going to primarily reload here uh, for 65 Creedmoor. Uh, 5x6 service rifle and 308. But now this is the Frankfurt Arsenal uh, Universal Bullet Seating Die. Uh, it was a pretty good price on that. It had some pretty good ratings. I'm going to check that out. Uh, so it seats uh, 224 to 338 calibers and works with BLD bullets. Uh, it's got a micro adjustable seating depth and I am shooting low drag bullets. Uh, I just switched for a Service rifle, I just switched to uh, Nostler 77 grain 
RDF, reduced drag factors. One of the guy, one of the guys on the uh, Marine Corps League shooting team with me. He's been having great success with those, and I thought hmm, I'll give those a try. I've been shooting uh, 77 grain here match king, but we'll see what these others do. What is in here? Hmm. We got a Frankfurt Arsenal brass dyer, brass dyer, brass dryer. A uh, friend of mine that I shoot with, uh, he recommended that one. And since I'm going primarily to a uh, wet uh, steel pen cleaning process, I uh, needed a dryer. That might be a press. It's a little heavy. No. So break for far small. <coughs> it's the rotary tumbler kit. Complete with steel pen media. Well, let's see if I can get that out. Anybody need any boxes? So we've got the rotary tumbler kit. This is one I've already opened. Uh, actually, just stuck it in another box. It is parts for the T track system, a 3 8 inch bolt, slides down in the track and lock them down with these little star nuts and a little clamping system that you put in the tracks. And uh, then all of that came from Peachtree Woodworks out of Atlanta or Peachtree City, Georgia. One of the places. Let's see what that is. That is. I'm beginning to wonder if my press is even here yet. That is the low impact bullet puller from Hornady Reloading Manual. Nope, that's Modern Reloading by Richard Lee. Uh, And Hodgson 22 annual manual. Really? Lots of stuff, lots of stuff to get out of the way when I finish the workbench stuff. That, I don't know what that is. I haven't completely opened it. But it is a metal wire rack stand. That I'm going to have to put together. Ah, made in China. Sure is. Fits perfect right over there. It is 16 inches deep. It's 35 and a half inches wide. I have 35 and a half inches. 16 deep will come out about half of that opening, but I can still slide stuff back in there and reach it. And it's 54 inches tall. I actually have. 60 inches right there, so that'll work out perfect. I'll probably put the brass over there and possibly bullets. I know the shelves are ready for 150 pounds per shelf, so somewhat heavy duty. And the last box. Geez, I hope this is a press. A lime and powder hopper. Ooh, this box has got all kinds of goodies in it. <clears throat> all right, we got the Frankfurt Arsenal uh, trimming from a drill, universal case trimmer that you put in a drill. I've got a Lee Precision Deluxe Perfect Powder Measure. I've got, oh wow, I've got a set of Hornady dies for 223 Remington, set of Hornady dies for 65 Creedmoor. I already had dies for those two, but my son shoots those as well. And I didn't want to take away his ability to reload. A couple of funnels, some Imperial, uh, I don't know if that's the dry. 
yeah, that's the dry neck lube, and I think I've got some Imperial case wax. Imperial sizing dye wax with the two funnels. Um, transfer magnet for uh, steel pin media. Case lube pad. A Lee powder measure stand to go with the uh, powder hopper. Oh man. Uh, safety powder scale. Can never have too many scales. Another uh, sizing dye wax. Wet dry media separator. RCBS prep station and no freaking press. Hmm. I'm going to have to go check my Mid South uh, site and see where my press is. Anyway, that's what Fred Claus brought the old Crusty Marine today. You guys take care. I'll show you another video when I get everything kind of fixed up.